Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about Cassandra write architecture in practical. So I'm going to show you how the Cassandra write happens first in theory and then let me show you how that happens in practical in, in background what happens when you do a insert or update with Cassandra. So if you want to get the complete videos of Cassandra, I have shared the playlist link in the description box of this video. You can have a look and if you need the complete video of big data course and that playlist link is also there in the description box. Please have a look. OK, let's get into the topic. I'll show you the diagram first. So this is uh, the diagram uh, by data stacks, which they have explained the architecture of write. So when you, uh, you know, right, uh, Cassandra is peer to peer, right? So before getting into this video, please have some basic knowledge of what is Cassandra and then you can come to this video. Then you will understand few technical stuff. Fine. So back to the video. So Cassandra is a peer to peer cluster to any node your write or read request can go. So the node that receives your request and process your request, we call that as a coordinator node. You can see here coordinator node. So when you insert or when you trigger an update command, what happens? The data first writes into memory and that is called a mem table. A mem table is a virtual storage layer that will be created in memory itself on that particular node and your data, your inserts will get first stored in the memory only. Okay, and we call that as a mem table. At parallel, it writes the information in the commit log also. Once the read write is successful, the commit log will be get cleared. So once the mem table uh, content, so first it writes to mem table. After certain criteria reaches, it it flush the information to the disk. Now you can ask me, what is that criteria? So when the data from mem table goes to disk, so there is a three ways okay the first thing mem table has a defined size sometimes 128 mb or 256 mb even 1 gb that is configurable when the mem table uh, size reaches in the memory it flushes the data to disk this is point one second if the cassandra cluster has been restarted or the cassandra cluster has been stopped then the mem data from the memory will be flushed to disk and then only the cassandra will get stopped third we can as a developer as an admin i can manually flush the data from the memory to disk there is a command i will show you that and once the flush is completed your data comes to the disk and finally we merge all this all those data we call that as compaction. I will show this compaction as well and I will tell you why is that required. Fine. So uh, the data that gets stored in the disk, we call it as SS table. The full form is shorted string. It's a data structure and the data that gets stored in the disk is immutable. Fine. Now let's jump into practical. So let me create a key space. Key space means it's a database, right? In Cassandra, we call it as a key space. So I'll create a key space demo. Uh, the strategy is simple and the replication factor is one. Fine. So I've created it. Now I'll just use it. Use demo. So we created the key space. Now what I'll do, I'll just create a table test. So create table test uh, and then I'll go with serial number int and I'll make this as primary key and then p name as text. Okay. Now I'll do an insert. Insert into test serial number comma p name values one comma i will insert my name gautam fine so now let me do select star from test okay so now i can able to see my data now uh, so all the data that you are inserting will be get stored in that particular node under this path so you can see i'm giving pwd the present working directory cassandra folder and then data directory and then one more data directory now if i do an ls and lstr here you will be seeing all the key spaces as directories so our key space is demo right so we have few more other key spaces like spark data and test as a key space which i have created and these are some of the key spaces by key, created by cassandra to store all its metadata information so inside demo what is uh, the table that we have created is test right so you will see a directory with test so this is what the recent one so i already created a test uh, table before and i have dropped it so this is the recent one so let me open this so cd enter 
So ls hyphen ls tr. So you are not seeing any files, right? So I have inserted a record one comma Gautam, but I'm not seeing any files, right? So that means the it's proved that the data that insert that you do initially it will be in mem table, and after a certain criteria reaches, it comes to disk. So I've said three criteria. One is you have to do a manual flush, or the re, uh, the size of mem table should reach its uh, threshold. Third is crescent raw cluster should be restarted. Okay, let me go for manual flush i'll fl I, I will i will do a flush so that is an admin command uh, there is an admin command called node tool flush which is there in cassandra itself and then you have to give your key space name demo so the tables what are all the tables with, within this key space will be get flushed now now if i do an ls hyphen lstr you can able to see some eight set of files and this eight set of files will be get created for each flush not for each insert very important people used to ask me whether if i do an one insert and then flush i will get it or even if i insert some one million record and then if i do a flush also i'll get only eight set of files so the eight set of files for every flush not for every insert Okay, so now if you see the data will be inside this file called data.db, the one comma Gautam which you have inserted, right? That will be here. So you cannot open it just with VI editor. There is a separate tool that you can you can use to open this file, but you cannot just like it. Uh, just like that you cannot do cat or vi so you have separate uh, tool for it and as a developer we will not have permission for edit this file or view this file but i'm telling you there is an option and the other files like if you see they are like information of, about the data and the table index information uh, filter information summary uh, table of content and then statistics information about the table and if you have any compression then that information will be here now what i'll do i will just do a, a few more insert uh, to the same table i'll just insert insert two comma Gautam and then I will insert three comma Gautam and uh, what I will do I will just update one record okay so I will just update one record so up, update um, table just test set p name equal to s a r a v a saravana bar serial number equal to two okay so now select star from okay you can see i have uh, initially i did a uh, three uh, two insert new insert out of which the second record i have updated so all these information will be in mem table now so what i'll do i'll just do one more flush here now you will see one more set of files you can see here initially it was one series mc1 which is MC1 and now you can see MC2. So for every insert or an update, you will get a new, uh, sorry, for every flush you do, you will get a new set of eight files. Now we did an insert and also an update and then we did a flush. Now we are getting an eight set of new files. Now, if you see here, imagine I did an insert and then I did a flush. So data came to disk. Now again, I'm doing a update. And then I'm doing a flush. So after update also comes to a disk as a different set of file. And in the in the disk, I'll be having before update also. So now you have before update files, after update files, imagine. So when you do a select star from Cassandra will give you the updated information only, but in the disk, you will have both before and after update. Now this is waste of uh, disk space, right? So you have some unnecessary files and this is where the compaction comes into picture. So you can also manually default the compaction happens in Cassandra, but manually you can also do compaction. That means compaction is nothing but a garbage collection. So for example, when you are cleaning your house, right? So uh, other activities are got impacted, right? So you have to halt other activities and then you have to do the cleaning activity. So the same way when you do a compaction on the table, to delete some unwanted files and then to collect and to compact all the files into one single file on uh, on an ongoing table right so the the read and write will get impact sometime the slowness can come so compaction is required so but not we should not do it very often so the reason is the read and write will be affected when you do a compaction so you have to decide when you have to do the compaction in my case i did a compaction uh, daily basis also by end of day and uh, even in some use cases in cassandra i did a compaction for weekly ones also 
okay so that is based on how uh, how frequent you are doing a read on that particular table based on that only you have to decide so what if i am not doing a compaction so that is very dangerous so when you are not doing a compaction your write as well as read will be get impacted heavily so you have to do compaction because for every request read request you do it it searches for all the unwanted files the cassandra reads all the unwanted file and then only it comes to know okay this is the latest record because you have both before and after update and also the disk space also also utilized a lot so now what i will do i'll do a compaction here it's a same node tool command only just remove flush and then do a compact enter so now come back and do an ls and lstr now you will you won't see the two set of file instead this two set of eight files will be merged and compacted to one version now we are getting as the third version so now all the records will be in data.db now the select I, i'll do a select again so there is no impact on the data so this is what the need of compaction so in this video we discussed about the right architecture in theory as well as what happens in the background of right when we do it in cassandra so right means insert and update both and one important thing is the concepts what we have discussed here it's very common you will see in other nosql databases and query engines also in hive also we have compaction and in hbase also we have compaction and in, even in hbase also first the right goes to mem table and then it goes to disk but instead of mem table they use a different term to uh, point it out in hbase so even in mongodb in such a way it works so things will be same so one more thing I, i just wanted to show you is there is a command in cassandra like tracing on this means it will give you the plan whenever you trigger some insert query or select whatever query you trigger it in turn tells you plan so now if i uh, tracing on and then i'm doing an insert it tells you what happens first so you it is parsing your insert command and then it is preparing the statement and then it tries to create the replica whether you have uh, replica in that or not and then appending to commit log and mem table that is what the architecture also says right so till mem table it's got completed right so this is the plan because till mem table then the flush and compaction is a different part right so this is what the tracing is all about so this is what i have explained you and along with that i have explained you the flush and compaction also so thanks for watching if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and also i have a one more new channel called g vlogs the channel link is there in the description box in which i have started posting videos of digital marketing contents like youtube instagram how to how to get more followers and make money and edit tools kind of stuff so if you are interested in that area please uh, visit my channel and please do uh, support by subscribing the new channel as well thanks for watching